welcome to the Performing Arts Series brought to you by the Kennedy Center and the Prince William Network. I am Suzanne Carboneau, your moderator for today's program. On the stage with us is Grupo Corpo, an experimental modern dance company from Brazil. The name Grupo Corpo is Portuguese and translates roughly as body group. And that name, body group, tells you exactly what this company is. That is, it's a group of people who revel in the movement and the rhythms of their bodies. There are 20 dancers in the company, and you'll notice that there are no stars, or rather, that all of them are stars. They dance as an ensemble, and we appreciate them as a group of individuals. Grupo Corpo is the most successful dance company in Brazil. It was founded 27 years ago by a group of siblings from the Pedroneras family, along with some of their friends. Rodrigo is the choreographer, Paulo is the artistic director and lighting designer, Pedro is the technical director, and Miriam was a dancer who is now choreographic assistant with the company. There isn't another modern dance company in the world that exists like this as a family enterprise. The company comes from Belo Horizonte, which is a provincial capital of Brazil, and it's almost 300 miles north of Rio de Janeiro. Because it is far away from Europeanized cities of Brazil, Grupo Corpo has been free to develop a very distinctly Brazilian movement style, separate from more European style. In fact, the company presents work that explores all aspects of Brazilian cultural identity. This is a reflection of the time it was founded in 1975. Just as in the United States in the 1970s, where such phenomena as the Black Power Movement, the American Indian Movement were rising, there was a similar awakening that happened in Brazil. This movement aimed at the exploration of, a, of an authentic cultural identity, where all the cultures that had contributed to Brazil were acknowledged. Grupo Corpo was inspired by this movement to build its dancing and its repertory on the traditions of European, of Native American, and of African cultures that constitute modern Brazil. And you're going to see today that their work combines ballet, modern dance, folk dance, and Afro-Brazilian traditions. The result is a very distinctive style that could come from no other place. The extraordinary physicality of the company is a result of this fusion of styles. Brazil is a huge country. It's larger than the continental United States, and it takes up half the South American continent. So the country uh, encompasses a great diversity in its land and its cultures. And like the United States does, it has a history of various peoples settling there and adding to the cultural mix. Grupo Corpo reflects this fusion of cultures and peoples in its movement style. We have to look at the history of Brazil in order to understand how the style of Grupo Corpo that you're going to see today came into being and why it's unique. Brazil was colonized in the 16th century by the Portuguese, who came in and ran roughshod over the Native American population that was already there. The Portuguese also imported slaves from West Africa. They came from Angola, the Congo, and what is now Nigeria. A majority of all Africans who were captured um, came actually to Brazil. And the result is that there are now 40 million Brazilians of African descent. Today, actually, only Nigeria has a larger black population. The characteristics of West African dance are still present in the dancing of Grupo Corpo all these centuries later. Look for the way that the movement comes from the center of the body, for example, or how it involves the hips and a fluid spine. You'll also see how the dancers connect with the ground, which is really different from the light, airy quality of ballet. They also dance with great rhythmic complexity, variety of rhythms playing with and against each other, and a great propulsive drive that comes from this rhythm. And finally, you have dancing as an expression of belonging to a community. 
They also use ballet. Ballet is the principal concert dance form of Brazil. And the dancers of Grupo Corpo have the discipline of a ballet class that they take every day as a basis for their training. But modern dance has existed in Brazil too. Ever since Isadora Duncan, the pioneering modern dancer who declared dance an expression of the soul, performed there in the 1920s. Folk and popular dancing are also important in Grupo Corpo's work. These dances, such as the samba, are a combination of European-style couple dancing, Native American traditions, and African rhythms and pelvic movements. Grupo Corpo will now show you some choreographic variations so that you can see how all of these movement styles come together in their work. Okay, now Rodrigo, choreographer, will take um, some of these dancers through variations that you'll be seeing later in the dancing, in the dance that you'll see today. So you'll see how a dance is put together and how a choreographer rehearses a company. So let's look at this. So you'll see some of these uh, movement styles that we've already talked about come into play here. First thing you notice, I think, is how grounded the dancers are. That is that it's what in uh, dance terms we call weighted. They use their weight to get strength and power from the ground, rather than in ballet, which is uh, very much up and light and airy. Also see here, too, how this dancer is using her hips a lot. It's a lot more than we tend to use in Western theatrical dance. Uh, the dance comes from the center of the body. The center of weight of anybody's body is the pelvis. And that is where all this movement comes from here. So you see those hips at play. And the appendages of the body, the legs and the arms, float off the pelvis. The pelvis starts the movement, and it's finished. It goes out into the extremities. You see even how her head became involved there. Yeah. Looks very different to us than what we're used to. Also makes the movement of the body look much more complex in some ways than we're used to. There's a lot going on at the body at the same time as though different parts of the body have minds of their own. The other thing you'll notice is how the joints are flexed here. Um, that is, the um, knees are bent, the elbows are held loosely. The body is held very loosely, ready to move. When you're stiff, when you hold your body stiffly, you're not ready to move. Here, the dancers are always ready to move very, very quickly and to change very quickly what they're doing. We also have an articulated spine there. That is, um, rather than working as a block, for example, as you see in ballet, you'll have the spine uh, articulated um, in each joint of the spine. So there's a kind of real looseness and fluidity to this dancing. These are phrases that these dancers already know, but they have to work on them over and over and over again to, cut, to try to achieve that kind of perfection that we expect in performance from professional dancers. One of the things that I think is so extraordinary about this company is that 
there's a great precision to this dancing. Um, even though they have that kind of looseness in the body, it's also very precise. The dancers know exactly where they're going to, to be in space. They hit that point, and it looks like it's etched in space for us. So there's a kind of imprint on the space. Also notice the rhythms that you see here, which are very complex. The feet have a very obvious rhythm that they're stamping out, but there's different rhythms going on in different parts of the body all at the same time. These are called polyrhythms, which is a characteristic of African dance, again, that comes into Grupos Corpos' work from those ancient traditions in Brazil. See how joyful this movement is, too. It's done with a real sense of inner light. You'll notice, too, how all of the dancers move together in these variations. Men and women do the same thing. We're just not so used to, in our culture, seeing men move their hips in this way, but you'll see that in Grupo Corpo. Notice, too, how you hear Rodrigo counting in Portuguese. That's the language the company uses, of course, the language of Brazil. You notice that they work on the same phrase over and over again to achieve that kind of perfection. So again, I think when that, when that phrase comes in the dance that they're going to be performing for you, you'll really, note, you'll really notice all the parts of it. Today, the company is going to be performing two excerpts from a longer work called Parabello. This is an abstract work. That is, there's no narrative, there's no story, and the movements are not to be taken literally as gestures. For example, you know, you see a, a movement like this and you know that means stop. Here, we're not looking for that kind of meaning. Rather, the dance is about the qualities of a region of Brazil um, that is called the Sertão. The title of the dance, Parabello, refers to this region. It's a desert interior of northeastern Brazil. Um, and the Sertão is a, is a large region, it's as large as France. The name Parabello comes from a Latin phrase, si vis pacem parabellum, which means, if you want peace, prepare yourself for war. In this dance, the word is used metaphorically as sun parabello. That is, the sun of northeastern Brazil, which is so strong that it can kill you, literally. Parabello is strongly rooted in the sense of place. The Sertão is the badlands of Brazil, and it's wild, arid, desolate, and harsh, dominated by rugged mountains, thorn bushes and cactuses, and oppressed by infernal heat an unrelenting sun. The music for Parabello is by two contemporary Brazilians, Tom Zay and Jose Miguel Wiesnick. Their work is based in tradi traditional Brazilian forms and instruments that are updated with contemporary influences. The music attempts to capture the spirit of the Sertão in the same way that the dancing does. Um, Zay and Wisnik's music inspired the choreographer, Rodrigo, to choreograph a dance that's utterly Brazilian. In the first section that you're going to see from Parabello, 12 members of the company will perform a duet, and they'll be followed by the full company. The movements and the whole atmosphere of the duet come from the northeast of Brazil, um, and you'll see the story about a bird called Asum. The bird's put in a cage and blinded so that he'll sing more beautifully. This story became a popular story in Brazil and an analogy to love, and this inspired Rodrigo to choreograph this duet. 
The part following this duet uses movements that come from the way Brazilians move their bodies. And it borrows the vocabulary Brazilian popular dances from the Northeast that use hips and arms. In this work, Rodrigo moves away from his balletic sources to focus on danced equivalents to Sertao music, focusing on rhythm and quality of surviving hardship with creativity and joy. Let's now look at this first section of Parabello.
the dancing has a very special look to it. The appeal of Grupo Corpo's style, I think, comes from qualities that look contradictory to us. That is, they dance with a quality of ease and looseness, a quality we might call cool. But at the same time, along with this ease comes a great precision and virtuosity. They perform incredible feats, as you just saw but they do so with that sense of casual cool that suggests that they have even more in reserve to give us. This sense of coolness also speaks to the folklore of the Sertao, 
which focuses on the larger-than-life characters of the people who have had to cope with living in this harsh land. While you don't see the actual folkloric characters like the cowboy or the bandit in Parabello, you do see suggested the qualities of the lives they lead on the Sertao, as well as the qualities of the land that they live on. We're going to now look at the last section of Parabello. Um, you'll notice the colors of the costumes um, and the midriff top give the sense of the intense heat in this region. The costume designers use lively and joyful colors like yellow, red, and orange. Also, she emphasizes the movement of the legs in the end of the performance by dressing the performers in loose, flared pants. The composer of the music in this section uses several unusual sources to create sound, such as a balloon filled with water, which he brushed against his teeth. In the soundtrack, he also uses a saw to get a metallic sound. He also built some of the instruments, and he incorporates popular instruments such as the habeca, a type of violin played in northeast Brazil. Normally, we have in this piece a photo collage in the background that incorporates icons and religious symbols. This last section that you're going to see now contains all of the Sertao's contradictions, its harshness and its joy, and the triumph of people who have survived in an inhospitable place. Here, they come together in celebration of survival that explodes with rhythm and community energy. As the piece opens, you're going to hear a poet singing. The lyrics speak of a blind man playing a guitar. And to give you that sensation of blindness, there's going to be 20 seconds of darkness before the dancers enter. And as they come on, the poem speaks then of a mother and a father and a daughter. And you're going to see two dancers, a man and a woman, linking arms, accompanied by another woman, all to suggest this image. All of these images linked to daily life in the Sertao. Let's now look at this last section of Parabello. Eu vi o cego lendo a corda da viola Cego com cego no duelo do sertão Eu vi o cego dando nó cego na cobra Vi cego preso na gaiola da visão Passaro preto voando pra muito longe E a cabra cega enxergando a escuridão Eu vi o pai, eu vi a mãe, eu vi a filha Vi a novilha que é filha da novilha Eu vi a réplica da réplica da Bíblia Na invenção de um cantador de ciência Vi o cordeiro de Deus num ovo vazio Fiquei com frio, te pedi pra me esquentar Eu vi o cego lendo a corda da viola Cego com cego no duelo do sertão Eu vi o cego dando nó cego na cobra Vi cego preso na gaiola da visão Passar o preto voando pra muito longe E a cabra cega enxergando a escuridão Eu vi a luz da luz do preto dos seus olhos Quando o sertão no mar de flores floresceu Sol para belo, para belo sobre a terra Gente só morre para provar que viveu Eu vi o não, eu vi a bala matadeira Eu vi o cão, fui no zóio e era eu Eu vi o cego lendo a corda da viola Cego com cego no duelo do sertão Eu vi o cego dando um nó cego na cobra Vi cego preso na caiola da visão Passaro preto voando pra muito longe E a cabra cega enxergando a escuridão Eu vi o céu, 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 eu v
cego tanto no nosso na cobra De cego preso na gaiola da visão Passar o preto voando pra muito longe E a cabra cega enxergando a escuridão Eu vi a lua na cacunda do cometa Vi as abomba e o fogo afagundar Eu vi o raio quando o céu foi de corisca Vi o triângulo do lindo faz cá Vi a galáxia branca na galáxia preta Eu vi o dia e a noite se encontrar Eu vi o pai, eu vi a mãe, eu vi a filha Vi a novilha que é filha da novilha Eu vi a réplica da réplica da bíblia Na invenção do cantador de cinza Vi o cordeiro de Deus no mundo vazio Fiquei com frio, te pedi pra me escutar Eu vi o cego lendo a corda da viola Cego com cego no duelo de seitão Eu vi o cego também no cego na cobra E cego preso na gaiola da visão Passar o preto voando pra muito longe E a cabra cega enxergando a escuridão Eu vi a lua na cacunda do cometa Vi as abumba e o folha as abumba Eu vi o raio quando o céu todo corisca E o triângulo lindo lindo pra escar Vi a galáxia branca na galáxia preta Eu vi o dia e a noite se encontrar Eu vi a luz da luz do ponto dos seus olhos Quando o seu dono vai de flores florescer Só para a tela, para a tela, sobre a tela Ele só morre para a culpa que viveu Eu vi o irmão, eu vi a bala matadeira Eu vi o cão, fui o sol e era ele We'd now like to invite you to call in questions. The number to call is 800-578-1396.
To help answer your questions, I'd like to invite Fernando Velloso to join me. Fernando is the program coordinator and set designer for Grupo Corpo. Uh, Fernando. <laughs> While we're waiting for your calls, um, why don't you tell us about your United States tour, Fernando? Oh, it's been very fine till now. Uh, we just performed in Nashville and then Philadelphia. We shall be performing uh, at the Kennedy Center Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then we'll go to Stanford and then Anchorage, Alaska. You're seeing a lot of the country. Yes, <laughs> okay. and we, we've been very pleased to do it. Okay. Let's take a question from a student in the audience. Um, go ahead. What is your question? Um, my question is, what is a typical day like for a dancer? Okay. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, 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 as days and meia aula de days and meia as as três ensaio. Yeah. Usually they practice six hours a day. They start at nine o'clock. They have a small break at one o'clock, and then they keep rehearsing till three o'clock. Quando nós estamos viajando, nós estamos no teatro normalmente de quatro à meia noite. Yeah, and it's different when we're touring because uh, by that time uh, we have classes and rehearsal at the theater on stage before the performance. Um, we have another call from, uh, I'm sorry, another question from the audience. I was wondering how do you choose the music for the dances? Bom, primeiro, é uma aula de técnica clássica que eles fazem, depois eles vão a Belo Horizonte, ficam três dias trabalhando repertório. Audição, né? Audição. Uh, we do auditions just like the others company do. Uh, the audition is a classical class, and then uh, Rodrigo asks them to do some variations of his choreographies. That's the way I guess all the companies proceed. Okay. We have a call from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Yes, I wanted to know how long it took to choreograph the dance. Um, the question is about how long it took to choreograph the dance. Uh, um balé de 45 minutos por volta de quatro meses, fora a parte de, yes. de criação. Uh, yeah. uh, a 45 minutes piece takes usually three or four months to do it. And then uh, it has the production side, which is the settings and costumes and lightings and everything. So it goes to six months about it. We have another call from, uh, we have another question from the audience. Um, yeah, how do you select the dancers for the company? Mm -hmm. How is it? The, uh, how do you select the dancers for the company? Oh, I guess I just answered that. It's yeah. through an, an audition with the classical class and uh, part of the choreographies. Is that the question? Yes. We have another call. Uh, we have another question from the audience. Hi, I'm from the Parkside Middle School dance team. And my question for you is, do dancers need to have training in classical ballet to be in your company? Um, the question is about ballet training. They only do training in ballet classical. So yeah, they yeah, they do actually, they practice every day two hours of classical dance. So it's, it's really necessary to do it. Okay. We have a call from Miami, Florida. Go ahead, caller, what is your question? Yeah, I was wondering why the second dance, what it has to do with a bird being trapped. Okay, the question is about the bird in the second dance. Uh, actually, the bird is, uh, the story is on the first part, but not on the second. Part yes, day. it's the do it. Uh, as Suzanne told you, uh, it, it's an old Brazilian story about the bird that was blinded and put it in a cage so he would be able to sing better. And then inspired by this story, Rodrigo made a, a kind of love translation for the do it. <laughs> 
That's it. We have a call from Gloucester, Virginia. Go ahead, caller. What is your question? I have a question that um, do they have to take, do any of the dancers have to take jazz or modern um, classes before they can audition? And how old do they have to be to audition? Okay. The question is, um, there's two, two parts to the question. First, do they have to study uh, modern dance and jazz dance? And also, how old do you have to be to audition for the company? Não, não. A nossa exigência mesmo é, é, é com o clássico e o trabalho feito com, 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 com que você já falou. E a idade, nós procuramos pegar as pessoas o mais no, o novo possível, de, que tenha uma, uma capacidade né, à altura da companhia. Não, o que eles precisam é para o clássico e o mais The younger, the better, because to do this kind of movement. So generally, uh, they start at a company about 18 years old or se sometimes 17. Mm -hmm. okay. We have a question from the audience. I'm from Parkside Middle School Dance Team, and I was wondering, where does the inspiration come from for some of your dances? Uh, where does the inspiration come from for your choreography? This one, essa, essa não, especificamente, não. não, essa especificamente vem, vem, da, vem, da, vem da, da, do Nordeste, das, das tradições yeah. nordestinas, da arte nordestina. Yeah. This particular uh, piece, the inspiration comes for the north of Brazil, that's Suzanne so well explained. But uh, Rodrigo uses to work on the music. He works with the composer because all the musics for the company are commissioned especially done for the, the company. So he works with the composer since the beginning, and then he starts working on the music. He always does this kind of work. OK, we have a call from Norfolk, Virginia. Go ahead, caller. What is your question? Um, actually, it's about the two-part question. Uh, the first part is, what's the youngest to the oldest of the dancers? And I've never seen any da dances like this before. So basically, how long has this type of dance been going on? Okay, the question is, um, how old are the dancers from oldest to youngest? And um, also, um, how long has the uh, company been in existence? Bom, a idade deles vai de 19 a 30. E o resto você sabe. Yes, and they go from 19 to 30. And the company exists about uh, 27 years now. Okay, great. Okay, we're about out of time. Um, I'd like to thank the students in the audience for being with us, and also special thanks to the viewing audience from across the country for tuning into the program. If you didn't get a chance to ask a question today, you can contact us by going to the website address on the screen to ask additional questions for two weeks. We'd love to hear from you and answer your questions. There you'll also find additional information about Grupo Corpo. We would also like to hear what you think of the Kennedy Center Performing Arts Series, so we provide an electronic evaluation form. It's on the Prince William Network website at the address on the screen, and we ask that you fill it out so we can select topics and resources that you need to enhance your classroom experience. This is the last performance of the season, but we hope you will be with us again next year as we bring you a new series of programs in performing arts to enhance your curriculum. For all teachers, please join us on May 23rd for the Kennedy Center's professional development program titled Living Pictures, a theatrical technique for learning across the curriculum. I hope you can join us. We have a few more minutes, so let's answer a few more of your questions before time runs out. We have a call from Miami, Florida. Go ahead, caller. Caller? Let's go to a question from the audience. Okay. Where has the company performed other than the United States? Okay. Oh, I guess I can answer that. Uh, we've been performing all over the world. Uh, in Europe, uh, Israel, most of the countries in Latin America, Australia, and now we've been touring in the United States. Uh, this year we're coming here three times 
this time, then next time to Jacob's Pillow in October, New York, and then Canada. So the company travels a lot. And uh, we do have a, a Brazilian tour once a year. We have a question from the audience. How do you design the costumes and the sets? Oh, I'm the set designer, and there is a friend called Freuza Zeckmeister, which is an architect. She designed the costumes. And Paulo Pederneiras, which is our artistic director, also designs the lighting. And uh, we decided all together. We watched the rehearsals, we discussed, uh, we do the options about the way we should see the piece, and we try to do it in a very way, unique way. So when you watch the performance, you'll be able to think that one person made it all. So we three, we work together with Rodrigo while he is uh, rehearsing and mounting the choreography. We have a call from Miami, Florida. Go ahead, caller. Hi, my name is Christina. I'm from Arvita Middle School. And I was wondering, what's the purpose of the repetition of the movement? Okay. What's the purpose of the repetition of the movement? Repetition de qual movimento? Não sei, talvez sempre quando você repete o um movimento, ele sempre fica mais claro, você enfatiza ele mais. Yes, that's what I thought. Uh, the reason is, uh, this is, Rodrigo has created his own vocabulary, and the, uh, the reason he repeats the movements, perhaps, is to, sometimes to emphasize them. Emphasize. So, so he does it again and again and again, and I guess that has something to do with the rhythm as well. Okay. We have a question from the audience. Um, do the dancers enjoy touring in America? Okay. Uh, let's, let's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let the dancers answer that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've been, we've been enjoying a lot your country. Thank you. We have a call from Washington, D.C. Go ahead, caller. Hello. I want to know how much inspiration does carnival and the music of carnival which is so famous in brazil play in the choreographers in uh repertoire dance movement Did you get it? no i didn't hear the question how much does carnival and the music of carnival and the movements of carnival play carnival. in the choreography yeah. okay how much does the music um, and dance of carnival play in your repertory? No, o carnaval é uma festa popular muito solta, que não tem nenhum tipo específico de dança a não ser o samba, então não tem influência nenhuma. A gente procura buscar mais nas danças populares de lugares menores, que são, que são danças típicas de certos lugares, e não no carnaval de uma maneira geral. Ok, uh, Rodrigo is saying that he doesn't think carnival has something to do with this movements, kind of moves, but he do uh, search for inspiration in uh, Brazilian popular dances, but not Carnaval specifically, because it's, it's a different kind of movement. It's a kind of, of samba, and it has nothing to do with uh, the work of this company. We have a call from Washington, D.C. Go ahead, caller. Hi, how are you? I was turning the station and I saw these dancers doing this beautiful dance that was different and it had a mixture of dances look like. And I wanted to know what was the name of the style of dance? She wants to know. She wants to know the name of the, if you have a name of the style of dancing that you do. No, nenhum tipo, nenhum nome específico do tipo de trabalho. Well, Mas é um tipo de trabalho que nós fazemos há 12 anos. Yes, e but é uma, uh, as I é uma, said, it's... Uh, I guess uh, Grupo Corpo has now his own personality with the vocabulary that come from Rodrigo, but not on a specific name. Okay. We have a question from the audience. Which contemporary Brazilian composers have you worked with? Brazi Brazilian ones, uh, Zé Miguel Wisnik, Marco Antonio Guimarães from WACTI Group. Uh, Tom Zé, João Bosco, 
uh, Arnaldo Antunes, uh, and the American one, uh, Philip Glass. Uh, maybe I should explain again that all the musics for the company uh, have been commissioned. So uh, this piece, Parabello, was created by Zé Miguel Wisnik and Tom Zé, which is a musician that's now working a lot in the United States with David Byrne from Talking Heads. And uh, besides those that Rodrigo told us about, uh, we also perform here in this tour in the United States a piece by, especially composed by Philip Glass, an American composer. Okay. We have a call from Richmond, Virginia. Go ahead, caller. Yes, my question is, uh, I would like to know, uh, since the name of the company is Corpo, um, the emphasis should, uh, I, th I think, is like done uh, through the body expression, but I, I wonder if they have some spirituality or some spiritual uh, inspiration on that. Okay. Uh, quick answer, um, if you have inspiration not only through the body, but through the spirit. Eu acho que é tanto no sentido de corpo como de corporação, de união, como existe o corpo de bombeiro, corpo de baile, corpo docente. Yes, the name is not only for the, the body movement, but as the group, as a whole body, as an institution, a unique body. But we've... Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you very much.